Hi everyone, you should be wondering what this pumpexpert.com is all about. It is very simple, we want to make your life easier. Why we took up this uh, topic on pumps is very very simple because pumps are the most misused equipment in the world. We want to just give you a brief about what is a pump and how you can use it. But I am telling you in all our episodes which we are starting from today, we will not be discussing about how the pumps are manufactured, what is an impeller, what is a volute casing or anything like that. But we are going to provide you with some simple solution tips and tricks so that you get a good pumping system, you could select a good pump and you could well have an efficient system on your hands. And that's the idea about all this. Of course, we will also be uh, taking certain formulas, giving you certain tips on how to calculate what and everything as the need may be. If you want to know about pumps, there are thousands of manufacturers and so many videos available where you can go and check out what is net positive suction head, what is delivery head, what is total head, what is friction loss. So many things which you could go and take details if you want to. But here we are going to call something, this all this episode will be called as Pump Application Engineering. That's the new term what we have come out with. Uh, it's nothing but the other side of the story. One side is the pumps, the other side is how you are going to use the pumps. And in pumpexpert.com what we actually do is very simple is that we help you to find out what is the perfect system and what is the perfect firm for your application. And we also do consultancy, training and complete water and wastewater management be it any size of the project. So if you want to have more details about all this, you can just visit our website pumpexpert.com. So with that brief, uh, what today I am going to take uh, is a very very simple subject which is nothing but transfer of water from an underground sump to a overhead tank. We are going to make it very simple for you so that you have a taste of what we are trying to say and how simple things can be. But really if you want to know more and more about this and especially the students or the final year students of engineering be it mechanical, civil or electrical or you are an ME whatever wherever you are, you are a consultant or you are an architect you are having an office and you have a lot of people working for you and you want to give them some education and know how about pumps please get in touch with us at pumpexpert.com and we'll be able to help you a lot on everything so with that let's get into today's uh, subject uh, which is a very simple one but i will also be discussing a very complex one later in the episodes to come just to give you a feel of how much you can learn from pumpexpert.com thank you guys just wait for a minute and we'll get into it so everybody is uh, aware of this and be it a small house or be it a two-story or three-story building or a villa the first and foremost is nothing but transfer of water to the overhead tank. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to have a two-story apartment and let me say this is the first floor and this is the ground floor, the first floor and the second floor and you have your overhead tank on top of this you just do have a sump here uh, underground underground sump so what we are going to do is nothing but take this water from this underground sump to your overhead tank so how do I calculate what should be the capacity of the pump capacity what here we mean is as you have to select a pump you need to have two basic parameters in uh, mind and you have to calculate that which is nothing but what is the flow I require and what is the pressure I require. Pressure is or the pump manufacturers will call it as head. So what is the flow and what is the head? Head is nothing but 
how much the, the how what is the height to which i am going to pump the water so we'll see both this criteria first let me take what is the capacity of uh, pump water suppose just assume that your overhead tank is a 5000 liter capacity tank and you're taking you're putting a submersible pump here which is predominantly an open well submersible so we assume that you get water from somewhere into this and you have put a pump and you're going to pump it like this take a horizontal and go up and fill your tank here imagine i have a 5000 liter tank and i want to fill this tank in one hour which means my pump should be capable of pumping 5000 liters per hour or it's nothing but 5 meter cube per hour so my flow of the pump should be 5 meter cube per hour now i have arrived at what is the flow now i need to know what is the head head is nothing but just take what is the distance between here and here this is the sump depth say i will put this as 3 meters then this horizontal distance just take it and here you need to take only the friction head on the horizontal line then i have a vertical which is the height of the building along with the tank which you can also take it from the drawing but since it is two floors and then the third floor you have the tank i assume it's about 12 meters it's an assumption for calculation purpose but always you can take it so what i do is if i call this as a and this is hf and this is b i also require something here we'll come to that so my head will be i'll call it as head total is nothing but equal to a plus the friction loss in the horizontal line plus the vertical uh, height v when i put all this you can just see a is about 3 plus friction lot let's assume it as 1 meter plus 12 meters you also need to consider one thing here is how much pressure i require at this point so what i do is i'll take it as 5 meters which is nothing but 0.5 bar i require minimum so when i put all this and calculate this 3 plus 1 4 12 16 21 meters is the total head for the pump so if i need to transfer 5000 liters from the underground sum to the overhead tank i need a pump which is having 5 meter cube per hour and a minimum of 21 meters but here we have again not calculated how many bends i have so one and probably you'll have one here two three four i have four bends and i need to have a friction loss to that i'm just assuming things and making it simple for you here but for all this you have charts and usually we refer the charts and find out what is the friction loss in the bend and i assume that to be another one meter which is equal to 22 meters and the most important thing how you decide and come to this one meter cube friction loss and other things is depending on your pipe size when you have a bigger pipe size it's a problem when you have a smaller pipe size it's again a bigger problem what happens is the velocity in the pipeline is a very important factor when you calculate all this as we go on with our classes we will be explaining you a lot about all this for the time being i just wanted to tell you like how you basically calculate this and we'll also be showing you some charts friction loss calculations water demand calculations you can uh, see that but when you attend all our courses you will have a practical experience of working on a live project and calculating all this this is a very simple application 
but there are more complicated applications to come. So now we have decided that I need a pump with 5 meter cube to and 22 meters and I do an approximation and probably I'll select a pump for 25 meters. Once I have done this, I'll get into the next topic is how do I make myself comfortable? What happens in everyday life? Every day morning somebody has to go and switch on this pump so that it goes, it fills on top and most of the houses, the overhead tank overflows. You notice it after half an hour or 45 minutes until then you have wasted a lot of water and after somebody seeing it, you go and switch off the pump. Just to avoid all this and you forget about uh, what is happening, I will tell you, you can do a very simple automation to this application. What is that I need to do is, if I don't have water in this, my pump should not start. That is my dry run protection. So I will just put a float here and keep the distance so that when the water level comes to that point, my pump will stop. The second indication what I need for the pump is, when I should start the pump and stop the pump, that is depending on the level in your tank. So I will put a float here also, which determines a high level and a low level. When the water level in the uh, overhead tanks comes to your fixed low level, the pump will start. But before it starts, it will check if there is enough water. And once it starts pumping and the float reaches the high level, the pump stops. So now what happens is, you don't need to worry about switching on, switching off the pump and it's a very simple automation which will give a comfort for everybody. I am not only talking about uh, an individual house, this can also apply to a group of flats, group of apartments where there are about 16 apartments and you have uh, this going on and every time you have something like either you switch on, he switches on or the security switches on and usually the security sleeps after switching on and you end up losing a lot of water. But by doing the small automation, you can save a lot. I am now coming back to the flow here. Why I need a 5 meter cube per hour flow? That is why I took this automation, but I calculated it. This is my 5000 liter. But the 5000 liter is going to be only for the first to fill. Only the first time when you are going to fill this, it's going to be 5000 liters. After that, because of this automation, you are not going to use all that, but you are going to use only a portion of it. So, I will not go with my 5 meter cube pump. Instead, I might go with a 2.5 meter cube per hour pump. So, the first time it might take 2 hours to come to the high level. But after that, it is going to just feed you how much and how much. Just by doing this automation and bringing down my uh, flow, the head remains the same of course, but flow, you might end up having a lower kilowatt or a lower HP pump. Look at it in the long run. Instead of a 5 meter cube pump, you are having a 2.5 meter cube and your pipe size can reduce. Still you save on the pipes, still you save on the friction head and you also have a comfortable filling of water. Yeah, some people will argue, I'll have a 5 meter cube come. What happens is half the time is what you will have. But in our opinion, the la in the larger picture, it is better to have a 2.5 meter cube and with this head so that you save uh, energy in the long run. So it's very simple like we saw transfer of water from here to here, how it affects and how you can change it by doing a very small automation to this. It is very comfortable and you also save a lot of money and you save a lot of water. And in some places where you are starved of water, the simple automation takes you through a long way. So whenever you are planning for something, 
go with the right amount of engineering i am not saying you should go with high level of engineering but the right level of engineering so that you save your pump you save your uh, electricity cost and all the more you have a lot of comfort because nobody needs to switch on and switch off the motor and it takes care of itself so the first topic we saw is from underground sump to the overhead tank the second one is automation of the system by doing an automation how you can save some money on it after this i am going to give you and touch upon a very important subject which usually goes with this is the pressure boosting usually for what we absolutely you do this and today you have very high end fixtures in your uh, washrooms like uh, rain showers uh, and body jets and so many things where you need some pressure at the equipment inlet so that you can enjoy it for example if you are having a rain shower and you go through the manufacturer's catalog he will tell you maybe you need to have an inlet pressure of 2 bar and this 2 bar cannot be achieved by just gravity flow gravity flow is again from here you will run a pipe up to this and you will just give the flow into the washrooms like this but if i need some pressure and shy in the system so that i could enjoy my rain shower then i'll put a booster in between these two a booster pump people call it in different ways booster pump hydropneumatic system uh, terrace booster it's all the same and where you are using it by just putting a booster in here i increase the pressure in the delivery line so that i can get all this uh, uh, washrooms pressurized and you need to calculate what should be my booster pump system how much pressure i need so uh, you i will we will take this up in the next Uh, class uh, probably because it's a, a subject which where you we need to give you some more inputs and then we take up this terrace uh, pressure boosting we will see how we can calculate the flow and the pressure for the terrace booster as of now just hop on to this look at transfer and a little automation imagine that you're putting a pressure booster we will come back to you and tell you how to size it until then goodbye from pumpexpert.com and this is balaji ganesh here signing off thank you have a good day